are the SLS, NASA's famous Space Launch System? The rocket that will return American astronauts to the moon? Or will it? Well, let's try to find out. The Space Launch System was born in 2011 from the ashes of the Constellation program. The Constellation program was called into life by then President George H. W. Bush to some mixed reactions. Ah, classic. So after the announcement, NASA immediately began work on humanity's return to the moon. The Orion capsule was created in this very same Constellation program already back in 2006. Yes, that's right folks, the Orion capsule is now already 15 years old and has only flown to space once on an unmanned test flight already back in 2014 on a Delta IV heavy rocket. And in the 7 years since, it hasn't done much, but of course it still cost a whopping 23 billion dollars. During the Constellation program, work also started on other systems such as pressurized moon rovers. Some of these systems were in a surprisingly advanced state as these recordings here show which are already over 10 years old. And of course during the same Constellation program, work also started on the Ares line of rockets, the heavy lift rockets that would have carried humans and payloads to the moon by 2019. Yes, 2019. When the Constellation program was cancelled in 2010 by the Obama administration, NASA wanted to salvage as much as possible from the remnants. And when the space shuttle flew for the last time in 2011, some genius people at NASA had the idea, hey, why not combine the remnants of Constellation with the remnants of the space shuttle? Hence, the space launch system was born. A rocket that is basically a combination of some modified space shuttle parts and remnants of the Ares rocket program should in theory save NASA a lot of money and shorten production timelines, right? Well, turns out NASA severely underestimated some key issues. Take the solid rocket boosters for example. Developed by Northrop Grumman, it was initially thought that making them a bit longer and thus increase the thrust by 25% up to a quite impressive 29.2 mega newtons wouldn't present such a big challenge. But it turned out to be one. This required in parts a complete redesign of key systems, delaying the undertaking by years and costing hundreds of millions of dollars more than anticipated or take the SLS core stage as another example. It was thought that using a slightly modified space shuttle main tank and even the space shuttle's famous Aerojet Rocketdyne RS-25 engines would be a total no-brainer and would dramatically reduce development and production costs. But no, because NASA made one giant mistake. They gave Boeing the task of developing the SLS core stage. And we all know that Boeing lately became a company that, let's say, doesn't exactly shine with regards to efficient management or innovation. But where this company does shine is with immoral business practices, such as for example bribing lawyers. They also shine with lobbying, with producing faulty and buggy software, both for the Starliner and also for their airplanes, and then letting people pay the price. And they also shine with insane cost overruns and the mentality of we can milk the government for billions of dollars and can get away with everything. And indeed, this seems to be proven correct once again with the insane delay of the space launch system, which already gave the SLS some quite hilarious acronyms such as Senate Launch System, Super Late System and others. We already extensively talked about what an immoral company Boeing has become in this video here, so we don't want to cover that in too much detail now, but suffice it to say that Boeing doesn't have a real interest of advancing humanity into space. They really just want to make money, that is their only goal. For example, 
In 2019, it was revealed that Boeing was hindering the development of orbital refueling technology and orbital fuel depots because this was conceived as a threat to Boeing's dominance as it would have allowed less powerful rockets from competitors to send payloads beyond low Earth orbit, even to the moon. And this was just one example. So back to SLS. What has Boeing achieved with the SLS since 2011? Well, in the March 2020 report of NASA's Office of Inspector General, it has been estimated that the total SLS program costs were to be as high as $18.3 billion by late 2021, increasing to as much as $22.8 billion by the time Artemis II will launch. So Boeing already received a nice $20 billion for a rocket that hasn't even flown once. So yeah, taking a space shuttle main tank and the space shuttle RS-25 engines and building a new core stage was too much to ask for poor Boeing. It took them 10 years and $20 billion to assemble it. Oh, and a quick insert, I wouldn't be too sad if you'd subscribe, you know? Uh, it would even make me a bit happy, so um, thanks a lot in advance. Now, if you watch our older videos, but beware, cringe alert, we actually predicted many times that it would be very likely to see SpaceX reach orbit with Starship and Super Heavy before the SLS would. Of course, we got brutally bashed by diehard SLS fans, but now it looks more and more as if our prediction will actually be confirmed. The Starship and Super Heavy started real development as late as 2018 in Boca Chica. Yes, folks, it's only been three years since we could start to witness SpaceX building stuff publicly for everyone to see at Boca Chica. Feels like a lifetime, but it's really only been three years. And look how far they have progressed in that short period of time. That's what a company looks like that really wants to reach space and really wants to make humanity a multi-planetary civilization. And it looks as if Starship and Super Heavy will have its orbital flight debut still this year, whereas the launch of Artemis 1 will very likely slip to the spring of 2022 even to the summer of 2022. As some sources at NASA told Ars Technica, as written in their latest article on that subject. And when was it intended to launch the first time? In 2017, that's right. The SLS was supposed to launch for the first time already four years ago. And by 2022, it will be five years too late. If it had launched in 2017, it maybe still would have been an impressive event. But by 2022, come on. The SLS is a relic from a time where rockets were non-reusable, expendable and insanely expensive. It was never meant to be reusable in the first place, because SpaceX showed only in quite recent history that reusability was even possible. And it is also a relic because of the old way of how it is being built, namely by the old aerospace contractors like Boeing, Lockheed, Northrop and Aerojet Rocketdyne. This is classical old space contracting, which is extremely inefficient, as these companies are used to NASA's slow development timelines, delays and cost overruns. They actually even came to expect it. Because what better way to increase one's contract money and thus revenue than to deliberately prolong development timelines in order to milk more money out of NASA for a longer period of time. But now SpaceX changes that whole old school space contracting enrichment scheme. SpaceX brings in a totally new dynamic that will completely disrupt this old way of building rockets, which is being kept alive by corrupt politicians who have strong ties to Boeing, Lockheed and these other old aerospace companies. Because they secure jobs in their respective states and thus securing jobs means securing votes for the next elections. However, what they fail to see is that yes, SpaceX will totally disrupt this whole scheme, 
but in the process, it will create an insane amount of new jobs. Every time old industries are being disrupted and old jobs vanish, many more new ones are being created. Therefore, it is very short-sighted of them to see SpaceX as the enemy. The transition from gasoline cars to electric cars is an excellent example. Yes, yeah, sure, jobs are being lost, for example, in engine production, and many old-school car mechanics will have to close. But many new jobs will be created, for example, in lithium and nickel mining, or in self-driving software, in AI, advanced robotics, in battery manufacturing, and many others. So companies like Boeing that cling to these old ways and politicians that even support this inefficient behavior really fail to see the bigger picture here. SLS is a remnant of the past, a time where such delays and cost overruns were normal. It's crystal clear why NASA has never been able to return to the moon after 1972. With this inefficient method of contracting, it would have really surprised us if NASA would have managed to pull it off. But now SpaceX is totally disrupting this dynamic and deep down in their hearts the people at Boeing, Lockheed and ULA, Northrop and so on, know that their days in the rocket business are numbered. Sure, they would never admit it publicly, but the only chance they still have is to block, sue, protest and hinder SpaceX any way they can. Which they are of course actively doing all the time. They have strong lobbyists who hinder SpaceX's progress any way they can. See the constant barrage of lawsuits by Jeff Hu, for example, having retired from Amazon to pursue a full-time career of filing lawsuits against SpaceX, as Elon jokingly but correctly wrote on Twitter. Or the ULA's shady anti-SpaceX lobbying practices that have recently been exposed via leaked emails. We talked about it in this video here, which fully confirms that SpaceX is being regarded as the absolute enemy of Boeing and Lockheed. So this latest SLS delay doesn't surprise us the least. Starship and Super Heavy will have more payload capacity than the SLS, even in its most powerful Block 2 configuration, yes, that's right. Starship will have up to 150 metric tons of payload capacity to low Earth orbit, while the SLS in its Block 1 configuration will have only 95 metric tons, 105 metric tons in its Block 1B configuration, and 130 metric tons in its most powerful Block 2 configuration. But Starship will be fully reusable with a turnaround rate of not even a day, nay, hours while the SLS is completely thrown away after every launch. One billion dollars wasted with every single launch. Thus, only two SLS rockets will be able to start per year, because that's the maximum number of rockets that Boeing can even build per year. Imagine how much more cargo Starship can bring to orbit for a much lower price. Starship and Super Heavy only need to be refueled and can start again a few hours later, all for a price of $2 million. While the SLS costs $1 billion per launch, can only launch twice per year and can bring less payload to orbit per launch. For the price of one single SLS launch that brings 95 to 130 metric tons to orbit, Starship and Super Heavy will launch 500 times, yes, 500 times and will bring up to 75,000 metric tons to low Earth orbit for the same price. So seeing Starship and Super Heavy, a rocket that will be more powerful while being fully reusable, reach orbit this year before SLS will send very strong signals to Washington. Sure, Boeing and Lockheed will of course mobilize their army of lobbyists to keep the money pit of SLS alive for a few more years. But at some point, even the most corrupt politicians will have no choice than to abandon the SLS and embrace Starship and Super Heavy. The US Air Force and Space Force is already doing so. 
cautiously yet, but their latest study of using Starship as a cargo transporter for fast Earth-to-Earth -Earth transport already shows how interested they are in the groundbreaking capabilities of Starship. SLS of course doesn't even allow for such a use, as it cannot land again, because we saw it's being destroyed after every launch. So it will extremely likely happen, as we said. Starship and Super Heavy, a completely groundbreaking new reusable rocket system that started development only three years ago and that will cost between 5.6 to 8 billion dollars in total development costs as estimated by Elon Musk, will launch before the SLS that started development a decade ago and already now cost around 20 billion dollars without having even taken off one single time. This latest delay is another nail in the coffin for the SLS and we are really curious to see how many more years this monstrosity will be kept alive by corrupt politicians and ULA lobbyists. Two more years? Three more years? SpaceX plans to demonstrate an unmanned lunar landing with Starship by 2022 or 2023 a manned lunar round trip by 2023 and probably a manned lunar landing sometime in the mid 2020s. And SLS? Well, we'd be surprised if SLS plays a major role anymore by that time, despite politicians desperately trying to keep it alive. So yes, we are very sure that American astronauts will return to the moon in this decade and do the other things. But not with the SLS they will use another system. Don't get us wrong, the SLS would have been a great rocket 30 years ago. I would have been delighted to see SLS take off in the 90s. But now, with a company like SpaceX showing what can be done in a much shorter period of time with much less money, these SLS delays are getting more and more ridiculous. Anyways, folks, that's all for today because too much ranting isn't good for my blood pressure. Let's instead be happy that SpaceX exists and that it will enable us an exciting and fascinating future in space. Jishuan and me wish you all the best, a wonderful day, and then I would say, on to the future.